Okay, so hello. So today I will talk about uh, using the finite difference time domain method for the analysis of moving bodies. Uh, this research uh, has been uh, done by uh, Mohamed Mavasti, the PhD student, and uh, me, the Professor Halim Boutayeb at University of Quebec on Ottawa. Uh, Mohamed Mavasti, he joined uh, actually in uh, last year, in May 2022, our research group, and he started to work on this subject in uh, September. So one can, we can say that this is recent work, but actually this is a, a much longer work. Uh, I started to read about the electronicism and the moving bodies about 20 years ago during my PhD thesis. And at that time I had many questions when I read all the papers about uh, uh, electromagnetism and uh, moving structures. And actually some of the results respond to these questions. And I hope that you will uh, uh, enjoy and you will find uh, useful uh, the work that uh, I'm going to present. So this is my research group. Uh, this is a website where you can find information about our research group. Uh, presently, I have five PhD students, uh, two postdoctoral fellows, and uh, three uh, master students. And uh, all of them, they join less than one year and a half. I am a professor at University of Quebec in Ottawa since uh, 2020. So this is uh, our research activities. We work on time varying waveguides, uh, the theoretical, theoretical and numerical analysis of electromagnetism with moving structures, which is the subject of this presentation. Here you can see a line source moving in using the finite difference time domain method, a metallic wire illuminated by a plane wave, a moving partially reflecting surface illuminated by a plane wave. And here, this is a, a half space dielectric uh, material moving too. Uh, we work also 180 degree angular range millimeter wave beam stealing antennas, orbital angular momentum antennas, about other research subjects, we have massive MIMO using quad port antennas, the effect of rain in event communication systems, intelligent reflective surfaces, and RF energy harvesting. I will say a few words about Canada North. Canada North is uh, called the Silicon Valley of Canada and is located in Ottawa. We have about 500 companies, more than 23,000 uh, uh, people who are working on the, this uh, technology pack, which is the largest in Canada. And uh, uh, close by, we also have uh, the Communication Research Center of Canada and Defense Research and Development of Canada. I'm living in this uh, region and this, uh, I work actually in a company for almost nine years uh, in that region. Now I am professor at University of Quebec on Ottawa. It's about 20 minutes from the Canada North. We have about 10 professors in computer science and 10 professors in electrical engineering and or photonics. The University of Quebec on Ottawa is located in Gatineau. And Gatineau, you can say it's a French part of the Ottawa Gatineau region. So the French part of the capital of Canada. And uh, you're welcome to visit us uh, in any time during the year. Uh, uh, in summer, spring, and winter, you can see we have very nice festivals. So this is the outline of this presentation. First, I, we have a pre an introduction. Then we talk about the numerical aspects, the observer, source, and scattering objects, the metallic slab, the michelson molly interferometer, the Sagnet effect, Compton experiment, Every side faster than light analysis, and then we have the conclusion. The analysis of electromagnetic problems with moving object has many applications. For example, radio frequency Doppler radars, astrophysics. Uh, I should admit, uh, Ali Reza. Uh, GPS, electromagnetic mm. optical gyroscopes, and and so on. It has been an important subject of interest for a long time. 
numerous investigations have been carried out in this area, which is interesting from a practical, but also from a theoretical point of view. In 1887, Voldemort Voigt wrote a paper called On the Principle of Doppler. And in this paper, he starts with the, uh, the, the, what we call the convective wave equation, which is a wave equation for a moving observer. And that's what we see here for 1D problem. And he wants to write it in this form. In the, it has a wave equation with the observer at rest, which is very well known. And to do this, he has to introduce auxiliary variables, so x prime and t prime that we see here. So why he did that is because he wanted to uh, uh, to, uh, to to find an explanation. So actually, he wanted to to find a new formula for the Doppler effect in order to explain the Michelson experiment of 1881. Uh, we will come back to Michelson and Michelson Morley experiment ex interferometer later. So that was his objective, because uh, analyzing this uh, wave equation in terms of frequency and wavelengths is difficult. He made it simple to, uh, to make it in this form. He just have to add these oxide variables. So in his mind, this, two, uh, this equation and this set equ equation are the same. And his analysis, he considered an elastic increasing, increasing medium and uh, this equation in his work, the work for acoustic waves or for light. So if it is acoustic wave, the A is a, is a longitudinal pressure and C is the speed of sound. And for uh, light or electric wave, A will be a transverse uh, field component and C is the speed of light. For a 3D problem, we have X prime, Y prime and Z prime, and then the T prime. And this is a wave equation for uh, uh, um, uh, observer at rest. And here we can see the gamma, which is an important uh, parameter that we will talk uh, during the presentation. So the gamma, you can see it in the void auxiliary variables. It is here and here. Andrix Lawrence uh, wrote this paper from 1892 to 1904 uh, about arithmetic with the moving structures. And actually, he adopted both auxiliary variables. And later, we will see he multiply with the gamma factor. So the, this very important paper from uh, Lawrence, the Theorie Electromagnetique de Maxwell et son application encore en, en, en mouvement, uh, attempt of a theory of electrical and optical phenomena in moving bodies, the relative motion of the Earth and the ether, simplified theory of electrical and optical phenomena in moving systems, Electromagnetic phenomena in a system moving with a velocity smaller than that, than that of light. In this paper, attempt of a theory of electrical and optical phenomena in moving bodies, Lawrence used uh, void auxiliary variables, and that's what we see here, the T prime and the R prime. And by using this, he find this uh, 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 formula for the field in the, his uh, uh, in case of a moving system by using this equation he was able to derive uh, uh, different equation actually uh, that actually supported maxwell electrodynamics because he was able to derive the formula for the doppler shift the stellar aberration of phaso experiment so here if if you see here he just replies t prime x prime using void variables and then by using by doing some algebra, you put everything uh, which, which is a factor with t together, sorry, and factor of x together, and then you can find the uh, Doppler shift here. So Doppler effect. And the stellar aberration, he's doing the same thing, and then he find the v over c here, which is uh, 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 well known for the. Uh, broad list uh, stellar aberration. We will talk about the stellar, uh, stellar aberration later in this presentation. And also for FISO experiment, which is an experiment has, that has been done by FISO with the moving water and uh, uh, analyzing the speed of light in the moving water. Uh, and uh, here in, in his analysis, when he have a moving, moving medium, 
he finds that the speed of propagation will be at low speed will be expressed like this. And Fresnel actually uh, uh, computed uh, this formula uh, in the 18th century. And Lorentz find the same formula by using his analysis. So all these uh, results actually supported Maxwell electrophysics. They helped it to accept Maxwell equation. And uh, uh, so uh, they were very important. So I have to admit someone. Then in 1904, he used again the variables of a void, but he multiplied with the gamma factor. As you see here, the gamma is here, the gamma is here. We don't have the inverse gamma here, or in y, and, and we don't have it here. And the gamma factor actually accounts for the lens contraction hypothesis that he used to explain the michelson morley experiment. We will come back to that later. And for the apparent increase of electron mass in Kaufman's experiment, so in particle accelerator. The finite difference time domain method, it's based on a discretization of Maxwell equation in time and space. We have here uh, the Faraday law and here the Ampere's uh, Maxwell law. So E is electric field, H magnetic field. Uh, here mu is per, uh, permeability, permittivity epsilon, and uh, conductivity uh, sigma. In Cartesian coordinates, we will have six scalar equation, uh, partial differential equation, and we discretize them in time and uh, space, and we use this finite difference in uh, with uh, space and time. And uh, the Yi cell that we see here, which has been developed in 1966, and this is an example of result based on the uh, Yi, uh, Yi uh, finite difference and Yi cell. Uh, this is for the update of HX component. This is uh, Yi's algorithm. First, we define the space meshing and the time step in initialization. And then we have an uh, iteration in a uh, loop here in a time loop. We, have, we can calculate the electric field component based on the previous magnetic field component, electric field component. And, and then we do the same thing for the magnetic field components. And then we increase the time. If you come back here, Maxwell equation, they use, uh, like look to this one. So they use uh, a space variable, x, y, and z, and time variable. Actually, this is all what we need to, to, uh, to, to take into account any motion. Uh, motion is just more, uh, a change of position with time. So let's use only Maxwell equation and the finite difference resolution of Maxwell equation to resolve problem with moving structures. We will just change the posi position of the structures inside the loop. So, they are problem with the concept of change of ref reference frames, which we call the void Lorentz transformation. Uh, first, this is this uh, void Lorentz transformation. This is limited to object moving at uniform speed. Speed. We cannot use them for rotating, accelerating, or oscillating objects. It cannot be used uh, for multiple object moving at different speeds. And also, we cannot visualize the moving object. Uh, everyone knows the Mikowski space-time diagram. Uh, this diagram is supposed to represent something moving, but we don't see anything moving. Uh, so the objective of this work is to analyze moving bodies. And when we say bodies, we talk about observer, source, squatters. They are the main bodies. With the FDD method and without the implementation of void Lorentz transformation. We will analyze the result and compare with the relativistic, which will, will be the reference for us, results. And then also we analyze uh, new problems and new results. So first we talk about the numerical aspects. We decide to use a window sign uh, excitation, which is represented here. And uh, if we plot this, we do the Fourier transform, we plot this in a frequency domain, you can see we can have a nice uh, view of the, the frequency that is here. And this is really uh, important to use. We cannot use infinite uh, sinusoid, of course, we have to limit our uh, simulation. And uh, the window sinusoid actually will be very helpful to see the Doppler shift when we have motion. This is the FDTD dispersion equation. It doesn't change in our problem with moving structures. 
and uh, we will uh, use actually this uh, disp dispersion uh, uh, letter and we will explain why. So depending on the delta x here, we can have uh, uh, a different speed of propagation at high fre higher frequency. So let's suppose we have a, a, a source or an object moving in the, uh, in the FDTD. So blue is if there's continuous, continuous move, uh, motion, the position should be writing like this. So VT plus X zero. So that's the blue curve. But because of the FDTD, the motion will be like the black, the black curve because we, are, we have discretized in space and time. We can approximate the black curve with the red curve. That's what I what we wrote here. So VT plus X zero plus A uh, sinus uh, omega uh, DT and omega Bonjour. is a function of delta T and delta X. Bonjour, Dimba, comment ça va? Ça va, merci. Est-ce que je vous prends un bon moment? Oui, oui, c'est bon. Parfait. Et merci. Reçu vos, comme je vous ai dit, hein, j'ai reçu vos, vos courriels et, euh, et, texte, et messages texte. OK. Excusez-moi, vous, les les vous interférez dans une cours, conférence. Donc, euh, parfois, je ne peux simplement pas répondre. OK. OK. Donc, Monsieur Nassu, j'ai reçu le, le, le message concernant la, la photo. Oui, et, euh, Il semblerait qu'il y ait un déficit. OK. Uh, so, I, I muted all. Sorry about that. So, uh, the, so the, the, the red curve is approximating the black curve. And we will uh, use actually the red, the red, uh, the, that equation to to uh, derive the analytical equation. So here we have a moving plane wave source, and uh, when we look to the at the, this observation point, we look to the field as this observation point. We will have the signal that we see here, and also non-desirable signal. That's something we we don't like, and that's due to this. Uh, discontinuous motion. And by doing an analytical analysis of this equation with the motion, we can show actually that the electric field will be uh, will have this form. And this, this one is electric field if the motion is continuous. And this effect here with the Bessel function and the omega d that we said before, we talked about before, uh, which is function of the meshing and the time step, uh, that's uh, will add actually uh, higher frequency and harmonics uh, in the signal. And that's what we see here. So we see here that one is a, is a plane wave, the desirable one. And the one that we see here propagating at lower speed is due to the discontinuous uh, motion. And that's the path which we see here. By using the, the dispersion equation of FDTD, we were able to make this one propagating at lower speed. And that's why we can see, we can differentiate uh, the two one. We find a solution to mitigate the, the effect of discontinuous motion is by using two layer of plane wave source uh, uh, in motion. If we do that, we can show actually that they will compensate and we will not see this effect here of the, that we saw before. So we will see only the signal received from moving source. So there is a source that is moving, it's moving, I will tell you which direction. So it's moving in this direction. That's why we see the frequency increasing in this, in this direction and frequency, 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 lower frequency here. And this is a plane wave here and plane wave here. The source is going in that direction in minus, uh, minus X. And that's the result we have uh, at this observation point here. The first session for frequency omega Frequency omega, it's a function we said of the meshing and the time step. It needs to be larger than the maximum pulsation frequency considered. And uh, from African analysis, we found that omega d should be larger than two omega max. And from that uh, equation, uh, we find that delta x should be smaller than 0 0.5 v over f max. So when you want to consider small uh, velocity, of motion, we have to decrease the delta x, you can see here. And this one is just a stability criterion. So decreasing delta x, you need to decrease, uh, decrease delta, t, uh, delta t. So this analysis show that if we want to simulate very low speed, we need a lot of iteration and a lot of cells. 
uh, based on the discussion, uh, 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 if we do the motion with cells, uh, and uh, this one actually shows uh, that the, the discontinuous motion, the, the numerical noise that is due to discontinu discontinuous motion is not increasing or not changing with the V. The solution to make a, a, a motion with low speed uh, by using subcell motion, for example, using the Holland thin Y formalism. This, we are working on this uh, solution. And some author propose, for example, moving dialectic interface like in this paper. So now we will talk about the observer source and scattering objects. So we will see in this presentation, actually, we don't use a, a, a subcell motion. Uh, so we we simulate some motion that has uh, that are the order of C, so the upon one, the upon three C, and uh, we um, um, we explain why we do that. It's because low speed problem are very really time consuming, and uh, also if we want to compare the numerical result with the analytical formula, we have to simulate for uh, low to uh, higher to, to very high speed to to see which formula will match with the results. And also using higher speed, it's, it gives a better visualization of the Doppler effect. And, oh, and uh, when we simulate with high speed, we can understand the, the effect of V over C, and then we can extrapolate what will happen at lower speed. The analysis that we propose allow us to do rotating, accelerating, and oscillating objects. We can consider multiple objects moving at different speeds. And uh, it is important to know that, except for particle accelerators, most electromagnetic problems are non relativistic Let's define a benchmark. The gamma factor, we will see it's a very important uh, parameter. So if we write the gamma factors as a function of V over C, so for if V over C equals zero, gamma is one, and then we increase. So for zero, zero, one, it's, you see it's, it's that value, and for uh, v over C equal, equal 0 0.416. Uh, uh, gamma start to be uh, the, the effect of gamma start to be uh, uh, more than 10%. Or uh, after that, it start to be more than 10%. Lower than that is less than 10%. So we can define this value here as a benchmark. So when we have lower, the effect is less than 10%. So we can neglect the relativistic effect, and then which is higher than. Uh, we should not neglect the relativistic effect. So here we have the moving observation point. So we have a plane wave. You see the plane wave we're getting here. I can stop that. So the plane wave is propagating, and here we have an observation point. It's moving in this direction. And this is the result. If you have no motion, you receive this uh, windowed. Uh, uh, sinusoid, so the black curve here, no motion, and the other curves when they are motion for different value of V over C. So that one, that one, etc. We found numerically, and also we can derive this analytically, this equation that we see here. So Ez is no motion, and Ez prime is with motion. So Ez prime t equal Ez t multiplied by this factor. Let's uh, Take, for example, an example, this one. V over C equals 0 0.4. At this point here, we are about zero, approximately 0 0.5. So if I take here 0 0.5, and here 0 0.5, and put here 0 0.4, so 1 point plus 0 0.4 is 1.4. Multiplied by 0 0.5, I get 0 0.7. So E prime Z at 0 0.5 is the same as E Z at uh, 0 0.7, that's what we see here. And we can, uh, we can, uh, 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 we can uh, validate this formula for any T or for, for any V over C. And this formula is very important because the Doppler effect is all here. We can just do a Fourier transform to know uh, what will happen in terms of amplitude in the, in the spectrum and also in terms of frequency. It's uh, like the function of A multiplied by T, and the Fourier transform of, of that kind of function is very well known. And actually, we found interesting that if you look to Lorentz local time, 
So you remember the uh, the 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 void variables of t prime, which Lorentz call it local time. It, it can be written like this, and we can write it actually like this. Sorry, if we have x equal c t, it can be writing like this. So we can say that Lorentz local time. Even we didn't include the uh, void of Lorentz transformation, we just move object in the FDTD. We have these variables, but for us, it's just the uh, the Doppler effect in time domain. Here, this is a spectrum, the frequency spectrum. You can see how the frequency is changing as a function of V over C, and how the amplitude in the, the, of the peaks is changing too. If we plot here the frequency F prime over F, versus v over c and if and, and we can also plot for different angle we can move with a certain angle and we find that the formula will be one plus v over c cos kinesis theta and the amplitude is changing uh, uh like the inverse of this uh, uh, of the frequency the relativistic formula is gamma multiplied by one plus v over c so we don't have this gamma and we say that uh, we can neglect that uh, when V over C is small. But if we want to implement that, actually it's very easy uh, with our FDT approach, is by simply take the field that we, we observe, so EZ observe, and we do uh, 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 post-processing. So EZ observe gamma T will be our new EZ, and that uh, new EZ will, uh, will include actually the relativistic effect. Here we have a plane wave source uh, moving. I should stop here and go here. Okay. So the plane wave source is moving in this direction. That's why here the frequency is higher and here the frequency is, is lower. Okay. If the plane wave source didn't move, you will have the same frequency here and here. Here the plane wave source is moving, you have higher frequency, lower frequency. And for different speed, V over C, so five, so etc. What you see is, if there is no motion, we have the black curve. If there is motion, you see the amplitude of the signal is increasing. Okay. And and if if uh, v equal uh, uh, is, is the speed of light, then it becomes infinite the amplitude. So we decide to change the model of the the uh, the plane wave source. Let's use a more realistic plane wave source. So we use current sources with resistors like this, and we match the plane wave source to free space. So we have to use the eta zero, which is the interesting impedance of free space, 120 p ohm. And if we use that value, that's the result we get. You see the amplitude is always the same, never change. The plane wave source is moving, it's matched to free space, and the amplitude here never change. This is uh, during my thesis, I work on antenna in uh, fabry pyrrhal cavities. This is a plane wave exciting a fabry pyrrhal cavity. It's easy to analyze the transmission coefficient. You, had, you have here the transmission of one is t, t. So when you go, the first y will be t square then you have reflection so t square plus s square and then you have to add exponential minus g k 2d and then you have uh, uh, four reflection etc cetera, etc cetera. and so you add this you have a geometrical series and then the formula will be this one if you take the maximum of this you will find that the maximum is giving by one if there is no absorption no loss the maximum is one transmission if you put the plane wave source inside the fabric cavity and you do exactly the same analysis, transmitted, reflected, et cetera, you add them and you get this value, this formula. So compared to that one here, you, 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 have, you don't have the T square, you have just T and here you have R. So the formula changes a little, but if you look to the amplitude, the amplitude actually is not limited by one. It can even, even be infinite. It can be very large. You can you have to take R very large, you can have, uh, R close to one, and you can have transmission very large. This is because the model that of the, uh, the 
the source that we are using is ideal, it's not realistic. This source is not interacting with the waves. It's like any wave can pass through it, like a bad antenna, it's a bad antenna. So it's a bad antenna, you can match the antenna and improve the power. And if and in that paper here, actually we use uh, this model of the uh, more realistic plane wave source, and we didn't have in, increasing uh, energy by using uh, a matched plane wave source. So this analysis that we presented about the ideal plane wave source, and we say it's not realistic. Based on this, we think that every side moving charge analysis uh, may have to be re revisited. This is a paper of every side, 1888. And he find that the electric field for a moving charge increase indefinitely and become infinite when V equal C. And if the charge was matched to free space, we have shown that it should not increase at all. It should be the same amplitude. So we think this should be uh, revisited. Also in Einstein uh, paper of 1905 on the electromagnetic of moving bodies, it also actually, actually has a problem also with the moving observer. From this equation, it appears that for an observer which moves with the velocity uh, C towards the source of light, the source should appear infinitely intense. This is a, a figure, uh, an image I took from internet. And you see when the, the source is moving toward us, or you see the amplitude is the same, just the frequency is changing. And this is exactly what we got in LDTD if the source is matched to free space. If it's not matched, you can, you can increase the, uh, the amplitude, but it's not uh, uh, realistic. It's not representing the reality. Um, uh, also, what we did is, uh, if we come back to the moving source here, uh, this one here, we can use two observation points and calculate the speed of propagation of the wave. And we can do that for all different uh, speed of uh, speed of uh, motion of the source. And what we found is uh, is that we found that the, the the speed of the wave propagation doesn't change; it's always c, so always propagating with the same speed, uh, whatever is is the speed of propagation of the plane wave source. And this is in an in an alignment with the. Uh, with this sentence from Einstein, which is called, uh, which he called his uh, second postulate. So light is always propagated with a definite velocity C, which is independent of the state of motion of the emitting body. Um, this is a spectrum that we got for the plane wave source. Uh, so you can see, this is for the matched plane wave source. So you can see here the, 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 uh, the, how the frequency is changing and the amplitude is changing. And so the formula that we got is F prime over F is one over one minus V over C. So it depending, it can be minus or plus, depending if the source is, uh, uh, is moving uh, toward the observer or away from the observer. From the realistic, realistic formula actually has the gamma minus here. So which is missing in our result that we got in FDTD, uh, simply because in FDTD, we, 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 uh, our time is not relative, it's absolute. And this, uh, we propose this simple technique actually to obtain the relativistic Doppler effect in FDTD is by doing a, a pre-processing. So we take the EZ of the source, uh, so the signal that we want to send, and we do this pre-processing in order, in the end, we will get for the, the, the Doppler effect will be the same as the relativistic Doppler effect. Here we analyze a partially wavelength surface moving in this direction. You can see also the Doppler effect and the wave is reflected here. And we can analyze the Doppler effect for different value of V over C in FDTD and it matched very well with this formula, which is a formula that, that, is, uh, that can be de derived using the, the wave theory. And uh, the special theory, uh, theory of relativity give exactly the same formula. Here we have uh, uh, inclined partially reflecting surface. So here the surface not moving, 
So it is a 40, 45 degree, and we see reflection at 90 degree. And here the surface is moving, so the angle change. And here the angle changes. And the, also the Doppler effect, you can see the, how the frequency is changing uh, uh, by analyzing the, the wavelengths. Here we show, uh, we, we have derived analytically and we compare with the result, the analytical result with the LDTD result. And this is alpha one, the angle of reflection. If we're moving in uh, plus X direction, if I'm not, I'm not wrong, one, one of them is plus X and the other one minus X. So toward the source or away from the source. And alpha B is the blue one. It's actually the bodyless stellar aberration, which he, he derived in, uh, in the 18th century, which is given by this formula. And actually we, we, uh, 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 we validate this formula or we, we tested this formula with the LUTD. And this, we did actually the same as what Lawrence did by using void uh, variables, except we did it with LUTD. And we move, moved the source, uh, inclined plane wave source with a certain angle of uh, inclination and we've got this aberration, the alpha B, and this is the blue curve. The two uh, formula, alpha one and alpha two, uh, Michelson and Lorenz actually obtained similar results, and they based on their analysis on Huygens principle and Fermat principle of least time. We also analyzed the Doppler effect for the moving partially lifting surface, and this is the formula that we got here and it is tested here for uh, two angles. And we can express this formula in terms uh, graphically actually, as we, we see here. Here we see uh, the line source. So the line source is moving in this direction. And by analyzing, by measuring in the LTT, measuring the wavelengths, we, we, uh, uh, we confirm the formula that we obtain for the Doppler effect for the plane waves, uh, the, the plan with the plane wave source. So it's one over uh, one minus V over C. And at 90 degree, we have no Doppler. And at here at 180 degree, we have one over N plus one plus V over C. Here we have a plane wave source eliminating a metallic wire. So the metallic wire is moving in this direction. And what we found interesting, so you see here. Okay. So what you see here, we uh, uh, we confirm that this effect is not due to the meshing or the time step. It doesn't change when we change the meshing or the time step and the angle of the cone that we have here is changing with the velocity. So we uh, um, associate this with uh, electromagnetic shock waves. Electromagnetic shock waves, they have been analyzed in other contexts uh, in the literature, but we uh, show it in a different context here. So with the moving wire, eliminating my plane wave, we can see the shock wave here. We can see the Doppler effect. So you remember the one plus V over C over one minus V over C, with something we can we, we find with a plane reflector and here no Doppler effect and the, on, the, on the other side will be one minus V over C of one plus V over C. In order to see uh, more clearly the shock waves, uh, what we did here uh, should stop. We, uh, uh, we have a metallic wire inside uh, uh, a static electric field. So we have a static electric field. Here. We don't excite, we don't have an excitation. We just have a static electric field everywhere. And by moving the metallic wire, we will see the shock waves, you see. And it doesn't have to be more than speed of light. It's just uh, uh, any speed, we will see this, this shock waves here. And this is the analysis of the angle that we will just analyze it uh, uh, numerically. After that, we analyze um, uh, half space dielectric uh, material moving in this direction. And this is the formula that we got for the angle of uh, uh, reflection, angle of transmission, the Doppler effect also uh, we plotted here for different, uh, 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 the different uh, V over C and, uh, and different value of N, sorry. For transmission, uh, sorry, the, the previous one was reflection 
so for reflection is independent of n in terms of Doppler, and for transmission, it's change for uh, the Doppler effect change with n, the index. Uh, after that, we analyze a, a metallic slab, and this is what the, the curves show here. Uh, if we look, for example, so the blue curve is no motion, uh, sorry, the black curve here is no motion. And if uh, we consider a slab at rest, we will the multiple flexion will, will give the blue curve here. So that's why we have the oscillation. And then if we move the slab, uh, we will have the same thing if the, there was a, uh, an interface moving, except we have the addition of the oscillation. So, so the multiple flexion inside the slab. We also analyze uh, three moving slabs, uh, moving at different speeds, and we can compare that with what will give a, a, a moving interface. We change the, uh, uh, the, we normalize in order to, to be able to compare this, this here. Here we have a moving dielectric cylinder, and you can see the, the effect of uh, reflection inside the, the dielectric which make uh, other waves coming here. Here we have multiple cylinder moving at different speeds. So each one is moving at different speeds, five cylinder in this simulation. If we, uh, here we show the result for three moving cylinder and uh, the, the black cur curves are here, the different curves that we see here, they are for uh, moving interface and the moving cylinder, the three moving cylinder will give us the blue curves that we see here. So it will be a combination of this, uh, the, the previous curves. So uh, we can compare with the previous curves. We normalize the amplitude in order to, to, to have a better com comparison. So what we found interesting is, uh, what, the way we can pursue this analysis is, uh, we try to do some uh, random motion. And we, we're trying to do like, for example, uh, the Maxwell uh, Boltzmann uh, uh, distribution of the velocities or the, the Bose Einstein distribution of velocities and see if we can ha have a, a something similar to black body radiation. So, this is uh, uh, analysis that we can do here. This is uh, the moving half rest dielectric for different speed. We can also analyze oscillating uh, uh, structures. So, here we have an oscillating reflector. And this is a result which are really meaningful and, and the, the frequency of oscillation actually, uh, uh, the, the, the spectrum will show that the, uh, how the, the frequency of excitation and frequency of oscillation, they combine, we have intermodulation and, uh, and uh, ammonics, et cetera. Here we have a rotating line source. And the same thing, the, sp the speed of rotation will give us the combination of the frequency of rotation and the frequency of excitation. Here we have the line source rotating around an observer. We don't have any Doppler shift on that one. Here we have a rotating observation point. This one is for accelerating observer. So if the observer is accelerating, what we see is changing of the frequency. So the frequency here decreases if the uh, the observation point. So if it, it moves um, uh, away from the source, and if it moves toward the source, the frequency increase. And this kind of signal is what we call actually uh, the chip signals. Here we have accelerating plane wave source. That, so depending if it's ideal, then we see the amplitude increasing. If it's the matched plane wave source, the amplitude stay the same. Here we have accelerating partial elliptic surface. And uh, now I will talk about uh, metallic slab. And we found very interesting results and that I will show now. So we have a metallic slab. So let's go, go back here. Okay, here. So here, this is metal, which uh, in this region, all the electric field is equal to zero. But actually, we did an analysis of this by also using high conductivity and the same result we obtained. So plane wave source, you see here the Doppler effect. The field is reflected by the, 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 the moving metallic slab. But what we found interesting is 
some wave will propagate on the other side. So in the beginning, we saw maybe we think maybe it is a numerical problem, maybe because of the LTD. And, and then we analyze this wave. Here, this is the magnetic field. So if you look to the magnetic field, what happened is we have a static magnetic field inside the slab. And then when the edge reaches the other side, so when the field reaches the, the other edge, edge, we have an electric wave. So we analyze analytically this uh, static magnetic field and this uh, transferred wave. And uh, this is resolved with LDTD. And we found that uh, the transferred waves will follow, in will have no Doppler shift. And the amplitude in frequency domain will follow this formula here. So that's where the formula is here. Uh, in terms of reflected wave, the Doppler shift is this formula which is the same in the uh, special relativity and the amplitude will follow the inverse of this formula. So this reflected wave is very well known in the literature. Either you analyze it with the wave theory or you analyze it with the special relativity is a same moment. This one has not been, has not been analyzed in the literature. Uh, so either it is a paradox of the Maxwell equation because it's not, we found it is not due to the, to the to numerical effect uh, uh, by changing the material with a high conductivity, we got the same result. Uh, or it, it can it, it can be true. The, it's it's very low. The amplitude is actually very low. It's uh, it's, it's in it's, it, for low speed is is uh, is about two v over c. So as you can see, it's very low. Uh, uh, but even if it is only an numerical paradox, I think it is interesting because we. Uh, we can analyze, we can use this kind of structure, for example, for uh, numerical using uh, for doing numerical uh, absorbers, for example. Uh, now I talk about the Michelson Molly interferometer. Uh, so this is very well known. Uh, we have, we suppose we are moving uh, through the light medium and uh, the time, uh, the, the delay, uh, the, 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 so we have a transverse uh, arm here and the longitudinal arm. And uh, the time for the wave going from in that direction to that direction is, is given by this formula. And for the other direction is given by this formula. And if we use the hypothesis, hypothesis of Lorentz, uh, so the lens contraction hypothesis, uh, from that direction, we will have, we multiply by the inverse gamma, and then we get the same uh, time on, on both directions. So what we did, we move observer uh, uh, so we have two observers in, in order to analyze the delay. Uh, we move the source uh, and the observer here in the longitudinal direction. And here we move the uh, source observer and the parcel relative surface that we put at 45 degrees. So this one is representing this uh, semi mirror in a michelson molly interferometer. And then we analyze the delay. So between the two points here and between the two points here. And this is a result that we got. So in the longitudinal direction, we got the same formula like Michelson and Lorentz. So this, this is a, not a, a difficult one. For the other one, actually, uh, I don't show it here, but what we found is uh, the wave. So the, 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 well, if we put the, the surface at 45 degree, when the wave reaches the detector here, it will not come at the same angle than the other the wave coming in longitudinal direction. So they will they will have a uh, the beam will be uh, divergent. So we have to turn the surface not exactly forty five, turn it uh, very slightly, and then they will they will converge. If they don't converge, the delay that we obtain is this formula here, a, a much a more a little more complex. But if we turn uh, to, in order to, 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 for the beam to converge, we got exactly like what Lawrence got. And uh, what was interesting, we found that Michelson actually uh, predicted this uh, phenomenon, and he predicted that uh, the effect will be very small. And uh, the LTD shows actually that validates this uh, this analysis and show that the effect is small actually. So this the red curve here and the blue curve they uh, almost match here. Uh, what we want to do to pursue this analysis is to 
uh, we found that the, the, the phase of reflection coefficient for moving mirror uh, change a lot. Uh, so, so if we look to this mirror or here on this mirror here, they will not have the same phase of reflection coefficient uh, as a function of V of a C. And we want to do this analysis to see if this cannot have an effect in uh, the, the comparison of the two delay. Uh, when we look to the uh, Nicholson and Morley uh, results, uh, actually, they, 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 this are not, they are not using the same uh, uh, scale. It's, uh, this one is even smaller than that. Uh, the discontinuous Y is the expected one, and the continuous one is the measured one. Uh, and, and a way to, to decrease the effect or the phase of reflection coefficient of the mirrors is to increase the lens. Michelson and Morley have uh, uh, increased the lens in the second interferometer, but they have to use a lot of mirrors, and this actually doesn't resolve the problem. So we found that uh, um, the, the, that interferometer has an asymmetry, and uh, this uh, new interferometer that they used in 1925, which is based on the Sanyak effect, which, which we will present later uh, in this, uh, we'll talk about it later, uh, doesn't have this asymmetry. So the wave going in that direction or the wave going in that direction, they are using the same pass. So now we don't have the asymmetry. We don't have the problem, the asymmetric problem. And this uh, michelson gall pearson interferometer gave, gave positive result, uh, contrary to the michelson molly experiment. So let's talk now about Sarniak effect. So Sarniak effect, uh, it has application in GPS. It's very important in GPS. Uh, and uh, we can use it for as an electromagnetic or optical gyroscopes. We have um, uh, designed um, um, a circular waveguide like this one, and also uh, another one with, using microstrip. And we are moving the observer and we're moving the source in the, for the two problem here. And this is a formula that uh, Sagnat derived. And we have the, the simulation here with the LTD. You can see here the source moving also on that one. Observer and source moving. Actually, here they are not moving. Okay, uh, but here they are moving, and the result we compare the the, uh, the time delays for different value of V over C, and they match very well with the Sagnat uh, analysis. Uh, next, I talk about the Compton experiment. So it's a little uh, uh, outside uh, the uh, our field, but uh, we found this interesting. In his this paper of 1923. Uh, Compton analyzed uh, what he called uh, the scattering of a high frequency photon after the interruption of a charged particle. So, in, with, in the first experiment, it was electrons. So, you send a, a photon uh, of a certain frequency, and, uh, uh, and you have here uh, another frequency. So, by using his, uh, by using a special relativity and quantum theory, he, uh, Compton, uh, get this formula here. Uh, what is lambda prime and lambda? I will show it after. So H is a uh, Planck constant. Me is the mass of the electron. And theta is the angle that we see here. So when we see the result here, for so depending on the angle, we will have two wavelengths. And the separation between these two wavelengths, sorry, is given by uh, this formula. So he used the... Um, uh, uh, energy conservation based on uh, any uh, special relativity energy and uh, uh, momentum uh, conservation. The two equation better than that, he, he, he got this. So what we did, we move a source in the LTD, and here we have uh, uh, a metallic wire at rest. And we, de we designed all this structure in order to, to replicate the result of that we saw before, this result here. And this is what we got here. And we, we have a different angle. If we look at different angle, we will have at zero degree one wavelengths, and then we will have the two wavelengths and etc. And if we compare the result that we got here with the, uh, with the, uh, with the experiment, they are very close. And uh, we derive this formula, V over C multiplied by one minus cosinus theta, based on the, uh, the classical Doppler effect. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and it uh, matched with the LTD result. 
And uh, if we want, if if we want to say that this can modelize the same problem, somehow it can uh, be a model for the same problem that Compton is analyzing. So if we say that this formula has to be like this formula, so let's say this formula is is the same as this formula, then we will find that formula. So m zero v equal h long over lambda i, and actually this formula is the conservation of momentum for a moving electron with speed v, and it has been derived by Widubroy. Now I will talk about uh, faster than light analysis. So first question is, is faster than light possible? Uh, many scientists uh, like Tesla claim to have measured faster than light speed of particles. If we look to the literature, uh, the literature it is states that this would invalidate special theory of relativity. Uh, however, uh, the Lorentz ether theory, it is validated by the same experiment and it uses exactly the same equation than the special theory of relativity. And in uh, the Lorentz ether theory, the speed of light is a limit of the model, not a theoretical limit of reality. Uh, uh, in, the, in the beginning of the 20th century, William Wien, is, he was among well-known scientists who claimed that the speed of light cannot be exceeded and he based uh, this statement uh, on every side analysis for moving charge, because the energy becomes infinite when the speed of light is reached. And uh, V actually had a very strong influence on young scientists uh, such as uh, Einstein. And we actually we say that uh, during uh, our presentation we say that act we should re uh, revisit every side analysis. The matched plane wave source doesn't have a field increasing. With the speed of, 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 the, of the source. What, what uh, every side said about that, every side said faster than light is possible. And he said, I'm not afraid of infinity. So even if he has this uh, solution with infinity, he said it's, it, for him it was still possible that faster than light was, was, was still possible. And in this paper of 1888, uh, electromagnetic waves, the propagation of potential and the electromagnetic effect of a moving charge. He did actually the analysis based on Maxwell equation of the moving charge if it, it is uh, more than the speed of light. And what he got is what we see in the figure here. The, you see the formula sinus theta equal V over U. Uh, so U is the speed of light and V is the speed of uh, the, the charge, uh, moving charge. And uh, here is the cone of the, sh uh, the shock wave cone. So the, he derived this formula based on Maxwell equation. And in the end of his, his paper, he wrote, he wrote this very professionally uh, to avoid misconception, I should remark uh, that this is not in any way an account of what will happen, happen, happen if a charge were impelled to move through the ether at a speed several times that of light about which I know nothing, but an account of what will happen if Maxwell theory of dialectic kept true under the circumstance, and if I have not misinterpreted it. So he, the, same, the, the, the same as what he said, we don't know what, if it's possible or not to, to propagate more than speed of light, but if it was possible, what will be the solution for Maxwell equation? Uh, based on a numerical solution. So we, that's what we did here using the FDTD. We move the source at a, a higher speed, so a sp a speed, a speed more than the speed of light. And then we analyzed this uh, angle here, this angle here for different, for different V over C. So we analyze this angle here. We can measure it using a numerical protector and we, uh, the, the measure show us that this angle uh, uh, is given by this formula, which is Ernest Max formula, and which is exactly the formula that uh, um, every side got. So this concludes my presentation. So we found that the utilization of the FDTD method for moving bodies without implementing void Lorentz transformation give meaningful results in different problems. We encourage the implementation of moving objects in commercial FDTD software. If we want to include relativistic effect for the moving source and moving observer, we can do it very simply by using 
uh, post processing or pre processing of the signal. And uh, I thank you for uh, 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 thank you for attending uh, my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Halim, for your uh, very, very interesting and unusual for, uh, for us, <laughs> very deep uh, physics. So thank you. thank you. Yeah, so if you have any question, I'm, I'm open. Uh, Dr. Halim, can I have, can I do my PhD with you, please? <laughs> I think you will do better than I think I think you will do better than Mitra. <laughs> my you have best, to my, pay uh, to pay. Uh, my best yeah. guys. I should uh, present. I should present. Lucky, uh, lucky to be with Baghdad. Yeah, I should present Dr. Fayez. He's he's a, a, a principal engineer at Huawei, right. and uh, he did his PhD no. with no, uh, Mitra. No, no. I'm a, I'm a staff engineer. Principal engineer. Staff, staff. Is uh, is it uh, more than principal engineer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Sorry, yeah. sorry about that. Okay. Wait, went on, oh, went on, uh, went on. Uh, okay. Raised me up. Went on. So Fayez asked the same question than uh, Mitra. <laughs> Habiba. Oui. You you uh, you you put uh, the same question than Mitra. No soluble question. We cannot response. <laughs> Habiba, are you in uh, Ottawa or in France? In France. No, uh, I am in uh, Paris. Uh, you have a very nice name, Habiba. Uh, very nice name. Like like Zahra, like Sarah. Beautiful names. <laughs> <laughs> Fayez also is good. Uh, uh, I think I think I really if I if I won, I'd like to have a PhD with Professor Halim. I, I mean it, you know, I'm not joking. But uh, the guys here like Sarah, Pedram, Rasul, and Miqdad and the rest of his students or researchers, I believe uh, God protect them. They are very lucky. And we are going to have a research center that's very, very proud, like whatever you call it, uh, Tesla, Hannibal, Halimbal, uh, Wentong, uh, whatever. We need to have a research center like the research center that the people from Nortel, when Nortel got bankrupt, were able to open with the help of Huawei. So we should do the same thing, but with the help of our own engineers, Miqdad, Sarah, Pedram, Rasul, and so on, and the director, Halim. And I will only be a student learning from you guys. I say that with very deep sincerity. Take mm -hmm. care, all. Thank you, Fayez. Uh, is there any question on the assistance? This is a beautiful presentation, Halim. Thank you. You summarize, you summarize the physics of centuries in one hour, in less than an hour. I don't know. Est-ce que je peux poser la question en français? Uh, oui, pas de problème. <laughs> J'ai vu que les particules se déplaçaient. C'est la source que tu déplaces à ces vitesses-là. Donc, tu contrôles la vitesse des sources? Oui. La, dans dans la DTD, on, on, on sait très bien, très bien comment réaliser une source. Oui. C'est cette source-là que, que je déplace, ou que je, je, je peux déplacer l'observateur, euh, ou je peux déplacer le, le, le métal. Enfin, c'est différentes structures que je, que je déplace, oui. que, je, que je fais, qui est en mouvement. Très enfin, bien. J'ai vu aussi que tu as parlé du charp, de la compression des, des. On dirait que tu comprimes les en fréquences. Fait, en fait, on, on a voulu analyser, voir. Qu'est-ce que la FDTD nous donnerait comme résultat si la source euh, bouge et euh, est accélérée, ou si l'observateur est accéléré, ou si la, la, la surface, la flèche est accélérée. Et tous les résultats qu'on obtenait, ce sont des résultats euh, qui, qui ont un sens. On obtient des, des, des signaux chips. Des chips. Et ça, ce n'était pas fait euh, dans la littérature. Euh, peut-être qu'ils craignaient, que peut-être qu'ils pensaient qu'on qu ne peut pas le faire. Peut-être qu'ils pensaient que la FDTD ne va pas donner des, des résultats qui ont un sens. Euh, parce, parce que, que... Ouais, ça. 
Je, parce que si j'ose comparer, quand euh, à l'IUF, euh, à Orsay, euh, on, on faisait du chirp avec des non-linéarités et non pas avec de la vitesse. Euh, on avait donc des, des composants non-linéaires et on envoyait des impulsions et ça faisait de la compression. Le même effet. Et euh, voilà, donc euh, je voulais savoir si, si c'est la même chose ou, euh, oui. ou Mais, ce euh... sont deux choses qui donnent le même résultat. Peut-être que le, le, je ne connais pas les détails de, ce, oui. de cette non-linéarité, comment ça se fait, mais peut-être que c'est peut-être que ça a un lien aussi avec, euh, avec quelque chose qui est accéléré. Peut-être. Oui. Hum. Très bien. Et dernière question, les fréquences que tu affiches de 0 à 60 gigas, ça correspond à quoi euh, Dans quel. Euh... Dans le slide, par exemple, je pense 70, mais peut-être que je me trompe, tu avais affiché des fréquences dans tes pulses, tes spectres. Ah oui, oui. En fait, Ça correspond à quoi, les 60 gigas en, en fait, on a voulu, on a voulu voir en fait, euh, si on a une source qui est en rotation ou si on a une surface qui, est, qui, est, qui oscille. Euh, on, on peut choisir n'importe quelle fréquence d'oscillation. Ensuite, oui. lorsqu'on regarde le spectre, on va, on va, on va, on va trouver des, 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 des produits d'intermodulation, des, des harmoniques, et, euh, et sont en lien avec la fréquence d'oscillation. Okay. Pour nous, c'est une validation en fait, de, 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 de la FDTD pour analyser ce type de, de problème. Okay. Par exemple, nous, on veut, on veut utiliser ça pour, pour la détection des signes vitaux. Donc, la poitrine, elle, 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 elle bouge avec une certaine, euh, disons, un certain mouvement qui est lié à la respiration et euh, au battement cardiaque. Et on pourrait en fait utiliser la FDTD pour faire ce type euh, d'analyse de, des signaux. Euh, on, on, souvent, on regarde les signaux, on, on, on a certains résultats, mais euh, on, on, souvent, on modélise la respiration à une, avec une oscillation à une certaine fréquence, mais bon, avec la FDTD, on pourrait le faire de manière plus compliquée. Euh, prendre en compte un signal beaucoup plus euh, 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 disons compliqué, euh, euh, qui serait plus en accord avec le, le battement cardiaque, par exemple. Oui, oui, oui. c'est euh, des paramètres de validation. Oui, c'est des paramètres de validation. Tu as euh, Tashkin, euh, Tashkin qui te posait une question. Euh, oui. Euh... Alors, il faut que je regarde. Alors, euh, très belle présentation, Alim. Est-ce que vous allez également faire varier temporellement les propriétés des matériaux euh, euh, Oui, c'est quelque chose qu'on pense faire. Euh, il y a la structure là que je montrais au début, la time varying, waveguide, permittivité, etc. Euh, on pense à faire des structures avec, euh, où en fait on va changer euh, disons, le load ou disons, le, on va avoir des, des, des stubs avec, connectés à des diodes. Euh, mais changer la permittivité, ça c'est quelque chose, on, on, ça, ça nous intéresserait aussi, oui. Est-ce que j'ai répondu à la question Oui. Okay. Est-ce qu'il y a d'autres questions I have a question. Uh, yes. Uh, are you going to have the presentation tomorrow? Tomorrow? Which presentation? This uh, this one. Are you going to have it tomorrow too? No, I, I will have a presentation with IEEE Montreal, but in June. No, but and, and... Merrick and, Merrick and Winyao are interested. Oh, Marika. I would, I would be I would be interested can, to have yeah, one can, tomorrow if you, if you have can, time. No, yeah, I can do the presentation for Huawei. Uh, if 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 they want, and I would invite Wen Tong, mm -hmm. if you like Wen Tong. Okay. Uh, you know Wen Tong. Yes. Yes. And uh, Arashmed, you know Arashmed, the optics guy. Arashmed. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, You understand what I mean? Because this is very valuable. 
presentation. As I said, it summarizes physics in an hour. And there is, uh, there is uh, silicon, uh, there are, uh, the Huawei now in Kanata are made of sub companies, right? And uh, teams are different, RF, antennas, optics. I would look for the optics guy. I think maybe Hadi, Hadi something, or, uh, or Arashmed, if you like. That's yes, my opinion. Yes, but yes. I will be interested to attend. But if the others say yes, they will. Otherwise, uh, that's OK. I'm fine here. Are you going to share the slides, too? Yeah, I can share this, but I don't have the email of everyone that is here. So you can send me an email. I can uh, send you my email. Yeah. Uh, on the possibility de mettre sur E3E, peut-être? La présentation. Oui. Et la vidéo aussi. Oui. Oui, la vidéo, je vais la partager. Euh, je vois qu'il y a le professeur Mohamed Latrache qui a rejoint. Oui. Est-ce que vous avez des questions? En tout cas, un sujet excellent, vraiment. Je, je m'attendais à des antennes ou des choses, mais no, là, yeah. la, 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 United Nations, and this is the beauty of Huawei, where when it first was established, and, and remember when we joined 1212, uh, you have you will see all kinds of na uh, nationalities in a floor, in a floor, a single floor at lunchtime. You feel very good. You feel that the world is in good shape. Mm. And uh, now I can see here you have all kinds people from everywhere. I can see North Africa, France, uh, uh, and uh, in the East and uh, in the Middle East, or keep up the good work, brother. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> if there's no other question, I will just want to thank everyone and uh, mm. see you next time. Thank Merci. you very much. Merci beaucoup. Merci à tous les étudiants également. I will be at Nemo, I will be at uh, APS too. J'espère vous voir aussi. Thank you very much. Merci à tous. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Take care of your health, Halim. Merci. You too, Dr. Faiz. Bye-bye.